Joining us now is Tuna Amobi of CFRA and our own Alex Sherman. Welcome, gentlemen. Tuna, any sense of why the stock is, is giving up the gains? Is, is there focus on, on perhaps the U.S. subs growth, which was negative? Yeah, I mean, Sarah, I think that's uh, the U.S. and Canada is one area where you can definitely, uh, if there's any negative takeaway. Um, but I think we all knew coming in that there is already a saturation in the U.S. and, and, and Canada. But more importantly, I think uh, um, the guidance for Q4 actually, uh, you know, leaves a lot to be pleased with, right? Um, Asia Pacific uh, is turning around to be um, the, the extremely important international market now. Um, so I think uh, all in all, we feel pretty good uh, in the momentum that um, that they have going into uh, uh, Q4 and setting them up for next year. A lot has been made about, you know, Squid Games. We thought that there was upside surprise even prior to that. But then they caught uh, almost like catching lightning in a bottle with Squid Games. And really, uh, the timing of that couldn't be better. So I think all in all, uh, we've, uh, we've got a little more time to dig into the report. Uh, there's definitely pricing power uh, across the regions, even within the U.S. Uh, and we're pretty, pretty pleased with the idea to be more transparent uh, and give us a little more granular data on the viewership of all the different titles, which is something a lot of investors have really wanted to, to get a sense. So all in all, I thought uh, the, re the results um, were pretty uh, encouraging. How much more upside, Alex, is there for subscriber growth and international if the U.S. is saturated? And even a hit like Squid Game, which everyone I know was watching, didn't lead to growth in the U.S. Yeah, I think that's pretty telling. I mean, growth in the U.S. and Canada was basically flat. So where did the growth come from this quarter? It came from the Europe, Middle East, Africa region, and it came from Asia Pacific, both of those regions adding roughly 2 million uh, subscribers each in the, in the quarter. That is indicative of the Netflix investment strategy and the Netflix growth strategy. Um, I would imagine there is, in fact, still a fair amount of growth in those regions. Uh, there clearly is not much growth left in the U.S. and Canada. Netflix is sort of the stable streaming service um, in, in both of those countries. And maybe they've sort of maxed out, which I think is telling to where the other streaming services are headed. Of course, those streaming services still more in their infancy, a year or two old at this point. They're all trying to gain as many subscribers as they can. Perhaps 74, 75 million in the U.S., Canada, which is where Netflix is now, is in fact the ceiling. Uh, Alex, it's interesting that they made a comment that during the Facebook outage, they saw a significant jump in engagement on, on their platform. Uh, of course, it's interesting from a Netflix point of view, Facebook are probably taking note of that and copying it, copying it and pasting it across to some of their defenses on an antitrust level because it kind of shows that these media companies uh, on, in the modern age are all rivals to each other, even if one is meant to be social media and the other one's meant to be uh, you know, TV and, 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 and movies. Yeah, Netflix has not really been caught in the crosshairs of the U.S. big tech uh, regulatory crackdown. Um, but even Netflix threw in a line in their shareholder letter, basically as a reminder, saying, hey, we are still quite small. If you compare Netflix not only to, to the social media companies, but to broadcast TV and cable TV, Netflix points out they're only 6% of total viewership in, 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 in the world, um, or, or, you know, if you encounter if you count the entire media world. 